Yo, what is up guys? It is Bumfries, back with episode 63 of our Reddit series. This one's going to be a little bit more entitled parents, and I know you're going to love this one. Do me a favor, stick around till the end of the video because I do have a little announcement to make regarding our upload schedule over the next week, and I want to make sure as many of you as possible know what's up. In the meantime, sit back, relax, and get annoyed at some entitled parents. So, my uncle recently got remarried, and that reminded me of an incident that happened with his son when he was very young. Now, I used to have a very decent relationship with my uncle. He was the youngest of my dad's siblings and born almost 15 years after my dad. He was always kind of a wild child, but when he had a son, he really settled down. So, during this summer, we all head over to my aunt's farm during this summer. This year, Spider-Man 3, the Tobey Maguire one, had just came out. Now, I was still pretty young, about 13 at the time. The entitled brat was about 8, being quite a bit younger than me. Now, I was a late bloomer and just hit that wave of puberty where girls sprout up like weeds. We were talking about Spider-Man and how it was his favourite movie. I like it too, so I tried to talk to him about it. He got upset and said that girls couldn't like Spider-Man. The entitled brat says I've probably never seen it and I just roll my eyes and describe the plot to him and he gets really mad. But for now, he simmers. Later, the entitled brat asks me to come outside and push him on the swing. And I do. Once again, I'm much bigger than him, so I can push him pretty high. Now, it was apparently his plan to show me that he was a boy and much stronger than me, so when he offered to push me on the swing, I accepted. He wasn't strong enough to get me very far. This enraged him. I tried to explain to him that because I'm so much bigger than him, I weigh a lot more, but the entitled brat was having none of it. He runs off into my aunt's garage and comes back with a wooden baseball bat. I'm so shocked, the first swing hits me clean in the stomach. The second was not so lucky. I'm bigger than him and pissed because I just coughed up half the orange pop that I'd been drinking before. I grab that bat, wrenching it from his hand, and I tell him, never hit me again. And apparently I'm so scary, in that moment he runs inside to get his dad. My uncle storms out, and the following occurs. My uncle says, what did you do to my son? And I'm sputtering and say, he, he hit me. And he responds, why is he crying? And I say, I didn't let him, and he cuts me off and says, and why not? He was just playing. And I say, he hit me with a bat. Not long after that, the rest of my family came down. My dad and uncle talked, and we just went about the rest of the night normally, except I was told that I had to stay by my mum. During the half hour drive back to our house, my dad was pissed and told me that my uncle tried to not just have me sent home, which meant the whole family would have to leave, but he wanted me banned from family gatherings from there on. The fact that my cousin admitted to everyone exactly what happened as he saw nothing wrong with his actions saved me a lot of trouble. Naturally, I wasn't, but my uncle was always super wary of me whenever I was around from there on. Well, we're one story in and I've already got my captivating title and thumbnail for a video, Let My Son Hit You. On a more serious note though, it's kind of sad to see that this person used to be so close with their uncle and once they had a kid they turned into this kind of entitled parent who lets their son hit other people I guess. I mean, that's not normal behaviour from the kid or the parent, but entitled parents make their own rules. A bit of background to this, my grandmother was one of 10 children and growing up she always came into conflict with her younger sister. Let's call her entitled great aunt or EGA. My grandmother's family were very much on the poverty line, but EGA was always entitled and jealous of my grandmother because she was older and she believed her mother preferred my grandmother to her. This entitlement never stopped, all the way from their childhood to a few years ago, and it got much worse once my entitled great aunt had a few kids. She would be constantly demanding money from my great grandma as well as jewelry and other things because she deserved them which quickly turned into, my kids deserve it, as they got older. I cannot stress how much this woman annoyed everyone in our family, and some of my earliest childhood memories were my grandmother arguing with my aunt over the phone over her latest set of demands. A few years ago, my grandmother discovered that she was seriously ill, and soon told the rest of the family that she was dying and only had a short time left. By this point, my grandmother only talked to my great aunt around twice a year and hadn't seen her kids for about a decade, but she assumed that her sister would at least want to visit before she passed. Boy, was she wrong. Not only did my great aunt refuse to visit her sister because my daughter is bringing over her precious baby next week, but also insisted that her children would be too emotionally damaged if she left them to see her dying sister. Bear in mind that her children are in their mid 40s at this point and all have families of their own and don't live with her. My grandmother, despite not getting along with her sister, was devastated and in all honesty, we think the way that the great aunt treated her that day sapped a lot of her willpower by the end. Now, before my grandmother died, she had planned her funeral. 
and on the day of her funeral, she only wanted to have her three grandchildren, me included of course, her daughter and son, my older cousin and grandfather who understandably was heartbroken having been married for over 50 years in the hearse behind the coffin. We had told the family this and also told everyone who was attending that we didn't want anyone showing up at my grandfather's house before as he really wasn't up to seeing a lot of people. My great aunt was fuming that her and her two daughters were not going to be in the funeral car despite it being my grandmother's wishes. She called up my grandfather and insisted that her and her two daughters would be going in the funeral car. Her argument was that grandmother loved my daughters like her own. They always went to see her and that they deserved to be in that car to show just how close they were to grandmother. Now obviously, none of that was true and they hadn't seen my grandmother in a decade, so my grandfather simply told her no and hung up the phone. This however is not where this ends. On the day of the funeral, a few close family members had gone to my granddad's house before the funeral as it was where the funeral car was picking us up. We were all sat in the living room when we see my great aunt and her two daughters get out of the car and come towards the house. Now, by this point, we were all pissed. My older cousin wanted to refuse her entry into the house, as she was not only disrespecting my grandmother, but my grandfather who was really not up to her crap. The three of them came into the house, and to be honest, they acted pretty normal. My great aunt was pulling out the crocodile tears and going on about how much she'd done for my grandmother over the years, but other than that, not much happened. Then the hearse arrives. We all start to get up and get ready to go outside, when our great aunt and her daughters rush to the door. We thought they just wanted to make sure they were ready to leave when the rest of us got in the hearse, but our great aunt walks up to the hearse and gets in with her daughters. Honestly, we couldn't believe what we were seeing. My older cousin and uncle walked up to the hearse and demanded to know what she was playing at. The conversation went something like this. My cousin says, you need to get out. There isn't space for you in the hearse. And my aunt says, yes, there is. Grandmother would have wanted me and my two angels to be in this hearse. They deserve it after all the years that they've had. And then my cousin says, she didn't want you guys in the hearse. I'm sorry, but if you three stay in there, there isn't enough room for the grandchildren. And she responds, those three can make their own way there. You can drive them and points to my uncle. And I can't have my daughters disrespected by not riding in a place of honor like this. Her daughters honestly just sat there and said nothing. I don't really know them that well, but they are nowhere near as bad as their mother. And they looked extremely embarrassed over the whole thing. At this point, we were all fuming. My older cousin lost it and unloaded on her, telling her that she is a terrible person, that she never bothered with my grandmother and always hated her, and that her daughters did precisely nothing for her in 10 years. My great aunt was shocked, but her daughters, who I think the great aunt told were meant to be in the hearse, got out and virtually pulled the aunt out of the car. We then got to the funeral and none of us spoke to the great aunt. She put on a big show, loudly whimpering and crying, as well as bemoaning how hard the day was for her kids. She left soon after and didn't bother showing up to the wake. Quite a few of my family members pretty much disowned her after this. I've never met someone so callous and entitled at the same time to ignore their sister's last wishes because she believes that her kids deserve to ride in a hearse. I've got quite a few stories about my great aunt from after this though, especially the stuff she pulled when her own mother was seriously ill. I'll be completely honest, this is probably one of the worst entitled parent stories that I have ever heard. The amount of utter disrespect and entitlement that was shown by this great aunt is quite frankly disgusting. I would like to think or at least hope that in a situation like this, my family would never act like this great aunt. So today, I talked with an old friend and this subject came up, so I decided to share it. I should also mention that I wasn't involved directly with this story and only now managed to put the pieces together as this happened more than eight years ago. So because of my parents' divorce, I moved every year to a different school until everything was sorted out. I was always the new kid, but nothing ever happened. One day, a week into this new school, we were, as a class, invited to the funeral of a kid. I thought it was weird since I didn't know anyone and didn't know what was going on. Turns out, the kid used to be part of that classroom before I joined and his mum was the teacher. I never met her, but she stopped teaching before I joined. They were pretty much liked by everyone and never had a problem until the kid got leukemia. From what I've been told, it wasn't terminal yet and the thing that killed him was that everyone went to go and see him in the hospital, including an unvaccinated kid. This kid died of chickenpox a while after and because everyone knew and liked him, the principal allowed the class to go to his funeral. I remember there being a fight between the teacher and an entitled mum, but I never knew the details. Today, my friend told me that the teacher sued and the entitled mum went to jail. Neither of us remembered any more details or even what happened to the unvaccinated kid, but at least I now know why I went to a funeral of a kid I didn't know. 
You know, reading this one out in my head before recording, I didn't really think this seemed plausible. But then I remember reading an article a few days ago that said six children who were cancer patients have died due to the recent measles outbreak. I think the worst thing about a lot of anti-vaxxers is they think that people attack them over their choices because of the health risks that it posed for their kids. What I don't think they realize is that most people attack them for their choices because of the health risks it poses for their own kids. They always then follow up with the excuse, well if your kid's vaccinated you should be fine. And that in itself just proves that they don't know how vaccines work and they really shouldn't have an opinion that they do. This is honestly something I could go on about but it's pretty clear that a lot of anti-vaxxers and entitled parents are one of the same. So this is my friend's story as a teaching assistant. She's in child development, so as a field trip one day, she was helping at one of the elementary schools. Anyway, as some context, the teacher she was helping was my mother's childhood friend who is a kindergarten teacher, and this was during some about to graduate kindergarten party that had all the parents in the room as well. My friend was there helping the teacher set up the classroom as the children were getting ready. The teacher had stepped out for a moment before the crap hit the fan before the parents were allowed to come in. The homeroom mum was the entitled mum and according to the teacher she never really came into the classroom let alone see any child other than hers. I've seen these kids before and the older siblings from tutoring them. My friend told me that the piece of crap child refused to help decorate the classroom and had to sit in the naughty chair. The entitled mum walked in and started yelling at my friend for putting her son in the naughty chair. She would not listen to my friend and as if she could get any louder, screamed when a little girl with a paper crown on her head tried to put another on entitled kid's head. The entitled mum grabbed the girl by the wrist and spun her around to then stumble back and let go of her and scream, get away you demon, stay away from my angel. The girl then burst into tears and run to my friend for comfort. This child had heterochromia with a dark brown eye and an olive green eye. A beautiful and rare combo I must say. My friend had looked at the entitled mum who was white in the face and shaking. A young boy with a prosthetic arm, which looked freaking awesome, tried to ask what was wrong before the entitled mum had told him to rudely go away. The boy looked like he was about to cry before walking away to his table. The teacher had come back and my friend explained everything to her. The teacher tried to talk to the entitled mum and calm her down, but when she approached her, the entitled mum lost it. Why is my child in a room full of problematic demons? The teacher almost lost it as the entitled kid was the real troublemaker in the class who bullies the other children with disabilities and problems. She had calmed herself and called my friend over and whispered a few things before my friend left the room. The teacher asked the entitled mum confidently what she found wrong with the other children in the classroom. The entitled mum grasps the entitled kid to her chest with a firm hold on his shoulders. Behind them was the classroom door where my friend could not only hear every word, the parents and principal heard it all too, as they were quietly taken into the classroom making gestures to other children to stay quiet and continue their work. Well, look at them, she shouted. That freak has two different coloured eyes, that one has a fake arm and that monster is albino. That little brat will end up gay just like her parents and those twin brats have bloody red hair and asthma. She continued on with every other child from glasses to being dyslexic. The principal then coughed and called the entitled mom over. She turned white and turned around to a crowd of angry parents and the principal. My friend and the family friend teacher knows that the entitled mum was no longer homeroom mum and she started homeschooling the entitled kid. The teacher also spent two days teaching the kids about discrimination and how amazing each and every child was. Thanks to my friend for letting me post her story and I feel so bad that she had to go through that and that the teacher had to put up with that piece of crap and the crazy lady who made him. Gee, that was an absolute mouthful to read, but this entitled mum is really something else. I'm a very firm believer that every person is entitled to their own opinion. The problem with this lady is, she decided to voice her opinion to the wrong people at the wrong time. Having said that, I don't know if there is a right place or a right time to voice those types of opinions, so this lady is probably just not a very nice person. Alright everyone, that is that for today's episode of Entitled Parents. I just want to start off by saying thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video. First of all, thank you to everyone who stuck around to the end of the video for my little announcement. Basically what it will be is that over the next week, week and a half, I will only be uploading every second day and every video will be Entitled Parents for that time. I'll actually be traveling until next Monday, so the next episode you will see will be this coming Monday and then Wednesday, Friday, Sunday, and then I'll try my best to get one out on Monday, but worst case scenario, it will be the Tuesday. They are all pre-recorded and I've gone out of my way to make sure they are the best possible episodes I could put out for you guys, so you guys are getting some really good content while I'm away. So yeah, I am sorry to do this to you guys, but it is really difficult to get a video for every single day when I like to get the best or most fresh content that I can, and it's just not possible when you're recording a week in advance. 
But otherwise, that is that for today's episode of Entitled Parents. I do just want to remind you guys, I have a Twitter and an Instagram that you can follow me on at Bumfries. And I just want to say again, thank you so much for watching. I hope you're all having a fantastic day and I'll see you all in the next episode of Entitled Parents. Bye.